this is my four fruit salad. Um, first time you're seeing me because somebody is videoing uh, me. So today I've got um, black grapes, which are these, and mint, uh, papaya, orange, and grapefruit. As usual, it's a four fruit salad. So um, the idea with fruit salads is uh, the ideal number of fruits I have is four. Uh, less than that, you don't have a variety of nutrients. Too much, you get a confusion of flavors. But four is just nice, and the mint leaves uh, give a nice, um, what do you call it? Boost nice, of a nice boost of flavor. Yeah, yes. it just takes it's your it's fruit. Different. It's not sweet. It, it, yeah, it, it just it. takes your fruit salad to the next level by having um, mint leaves in them. Yummy. So what's inside this lovely soup daddy? Okay. It's amazing. Um, it's actually started life as my baked beans. So for my baked beans, I pressure cook chickpeas, um, moche beans, uh, some white beans, okay? And uh, with lots of water. Then I drained out the water, discarded it actually and then put the cooked beans back into the pressure cooker with, um, well, I boiled it with some asafetida, okay? Um, so I discarded the water, put the beans back into the pressure cooker, put a can of tomato puree, uh, some uh, ground paprika powder, a little bit of samba powder, but not much, and then some basil, oregano, um, powder and then I pressure cooked it again and then it became big beans okay it was really nice uh, I had a few days of eating that until I got bored I tend to cook too much because one batch in a pressure cooker is quite a bit and then it, it dried out and it became uh, chana masala so chana masala is uh, like chickpea curry dry kind of curry so I had two or three meals of that and then the leftover of this chana masala I mix with uh, tomato soup powder from no no tomato soup powder and then added boiling water then I pressure cooked it again so then it became this soup this is my tomato bean soup it's quite strange how the color had changed from um, white and then when I put the tomato puree it became red and now it's become dark um, but it, it's really tasty, okay? Okay, I made this um, pickled vegetables yesterday. I had kohlrabi and carrots in them yesterday, but it was so nice I finished it, uh, the, the, the kohlrabi. Um, so this one has uh, carrots, uh, ripe tomatoes, you know, really nice, juicy ripe tomatoes, um, uh, roasted red capsicums, cucumber, and uh, normal kohlrabi. And uh, Alisa wants me to explain what kohlrabi is. Kohlrabi is the same species as kailan, cabbage, kale, uh, broccoli. So, you know, some people like to eat the batang of the kailan because it's nice and crunchy. So kohlrabi is batang kailan heaven. So what they've done is they bread the kailan so that the batang becomes big and round. It becomes like a turnip. In fact, the word kohlrabi means um, German turnip. So, 
um, it's not a turnip species wise but it's the batang of the kailan that's grown into like a bulb and it's like a ubi sengkong like that so it's really nice and crunchy so um, basically with this vegetable pickle vegetable I cut them into strips and then put them into an assortment of vinegar um, there is a similar dish in Malay cooking which they use chukka tirwan artificial acetic acid which makes the taste very harsh so I don't use that vinegar um, I, I use apple cider vinegar mostly but apple cider vinegar tends to be a bit too fruity in, in pickled vegetables so it gives it a very strange kind of sweetness so I mixed it with some lime juice, lemon juice um, some white balsamic vinegar and a dash of red balsamic vinegar so it sort of neutralizes the flavor it gives acidity without any overpowering over notes so alisa likes this it's nice and crunchy um, and a little bit of salt just a little bit of salt to draw out the moisture from the vegetable so that it becomes crispy uh, other than that uh, keep it in the fridge overnight and then it's fine <laughs>